Let's not stand on ceremony here. Mr. Wayne. Hey, what's up, peeps and geeks? Welcome to another episode of Direct Edition. And today, I am so happy. Happy, happy, happy. Joy, joy, joy. Because I picked up the Dark Knight Rises Bane, finally. Now, I got this guy from Second and Charles. Um, I was actually... I had like a whole bunch of books in my hand. And I said, damn, I'm going to have to put some books back. But I didn't. And I kept rolling with the books, which is about probably like $30 worth of books. And then I just so happened to look over. Because they had some cool action figures there before. Matter of fact, they had a whole bunch of high-priced Marvel Legends. And that's where I snatched my Captain Britain from for $14. But he goes for like over $50 online. So I said, let me go to the toy section and see what they have. And this guy was sitting there. And I've been eyeing this guy for about two to three years. But he went up to like 60 bucks. So I picked him up for not 20, not 30, not 40, but 18 bucks. So if you allow, once again, my sexy hands to invade your video, let's take a closer look at Bane or Tom Hardy. Wow, look at that mug. Man, I am such a huge Bane fan just because of the freaking movie. Like, Batman the Animated Series, yeah, he was, you know, cool and he jacked up off of Venom. But Tom Hardy took this character to a totally another level. Just look at that face. I was born in it. Molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then, it was nothing to me but blinding. So, super happy to have him. Here's a look at the back. I don't care about the other characters. <laughs> I hate to say that. I hate to say that for anybody who really likes to collect this. So, I'm not going to be negative. But the only one I was really interested in was Bane. And when you put all three, you know, him, Alfred, Alfred and Batman together. Christian Bale's Batman, it actually makes the bat signal. So kudos to anybody that wants to buy this, uh, the whole, all three. But like I said, I was totally just looking for a bang. So with that being said, let's get into some of the comics that I picked up this week. Okay, so right off the bat, we have DC special number one. This is Donna Troy, uh, the return of Donna Troy. I've actually always had a soft spot for Donna Troy. I don't know why. I know that one time it was it was like confusing. People were saying, or DC, their continuity was saying that Wonder Woman and a younger version of Wonder Woman were in the same timeline. But in order to correct that, they gave the younger Wonder Woman the title of Donna Troy. So I've always been a Donna Troy fan. Always liked her. Always liked Wonder Girl. And yeah, I was just so happy to have this in my collection. This is one of my favorite selects. I'm sorry I'm getting off subject, but wow, just look at that. The Green Goblin. You got Spider-Man. This actually comes from a famous Spider-Man cover. I uh, can't wait to get that in my collection either. It's like a Silver Age book, maybe Bronze Age, I'm not sure. But yeah, while I'm showing you the first comic, I might as well show you some of my selects. I think now I have over, what, about 25 Marvel Selects. So if you guys want to see that, one of my first videos is me showing uh, off my Marvel Select collection. I think I'm going to do a up-to-date video because back then I was my first video, so it kind of sucked. But anyway, back to Donna Troy. Look at that cover, man. For you Transformers fans, look at that planet. It almost looks like Unicron, doesn't it? Ultra Magnus. Okay, so that's number one. So while we're on the subject of Donna Troy and Wonder Woman, which go hand in hand, I think Donna Troy ended up being like Wonder Woman's little sister eventually. Uh, about a year ago, I was, you know, rummaging through my mail and I got a package and I'm like, oh, uh, Amazon package, I forgot. But now it's actually my little brother window sent me this. This is uh, a Wonder Woman Odyssey. Uh, it's a trade paperback. It's, it's very, very cool. Wonder Woman is very, very violent. It was, and that's the way I like her. 
I've always had a lot of respect for Wonder Woman ever since Linda Carter. And it's a new Wonder Woman book out on the shelves right now in your local comic book shop. It's really, really thick. I think it's like the 75th anniversary or even, I don't know, it's like a Wonder Woman celebration book. I definitely have to have it. It has a $7.99 cover price, but hey, for us Wonder Woman fans, I'm definitely going to pick it up. But anyway, this is a trade paperback that I love. It's, it's a couple years old, but it's very, very good. Let's take a look at the back. The back it says Wonder Woman Reborn. I uh, can't get that glare off. Let's get that glare off. There you go. You know, if you want to, you can pause and read the synopsis. But yeah. I really like this. I really like this book. Thank you, Wendell. Okay, so the next one we have on the list is Deadpool number 46. For some reason, every time I go in second to Charles, I see this behind the glass is one of their most important is one of their important books. Um, you know, in second to Charles, if you get a book behind the glass, they have to take it up to the front for you. You can't just say, hey, let me see that cover book. Get out the glass and carry it around yourself. They have to take it up front. <clears throat> so I was always wondering about this book and um, I ended up finding this book for 50 cents. Very, very cool cover. Very realistic cover. Not quite sure who does the cover. But yeah, it's a pretty cool book. Matter of fact, um, on my Facebook profile, I actually had this picture as one of my profile pictures way back in the day when I first got on Facebook. Very, very cool. Love it. By the way, this is a hot book. I think this book is going for about $15 to $20. So if you get a chance, go ahead and scoop it up. Uh, I would pay $5 or less for it. Another book I was able to pick up is a next, very next Deadpool book. This is Deadpool number 48, where he's actually like in a casket. Uh, trying yeah, to this out. cover reminds me of Batman R.I.P., one of my favorite Batman runs. The next book I was able to pick up is Moon Knight, which is Marvel's Batman, drawn by David Finch, Moon Knight number one. This is a very, very cool book. Uh, I actually have two copies of this. I remember picking this up when it first came out right off the shelf. I've always been a Moon Knight fan to a certain degree. He's crazy, Mark Spector. But I've always been a huge David Finch fan too, so. But yeah, got this for 50 cents. Can you beat that? And I was also able to pick up the very next Moon Knight book, which is Moon Knight number two for 50 cents. You know, you rarely can go to any comic book shop and find one and two. Usually you find two. You don't find one. But I was able to find both of them for 50 cents. David Finch covers. Wow, look at this cover. Let's just take a look. I was going to go on to the next book. But man, Mark, David Finch is a beast. Wow. I really got into David Finch's artwork in the Ultimate Universe. Uh, he did a bunch of the Ultimate Spider-Mans. He did a crossover with Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Wolverine, and Ultimate Daredevil. Um, I think that run is called Hollywood. Very, very cool run. Now I was able to pick up this X-Men Divided We Stand. This is when the X-Men moved out to San Francisco. And this is Divided We Stand Part 1. But I already had this in my collection, but I wanted to show you this because... We're going to go and show you this whole run. So not only was, not only did I already have number one, now I have Divided We Stand number two and number three. But wait, there's still a little more. But also I have Divided We Stand number four and number five. So I just want to digress and tell you about this story just for a quick second. What happened is uh, X-Men first moved out to San Francisco. And so you have an X-Men villain by the name of Mr. Mastermind or Mastermind. Now, Mastermind, I think he has a daughter. But this story isn't about Mr. Mastermind. It's about Lady Mastermind. What Lady Mastermind does is she takes the whole San Francisco and sends them back to the 70s. And that's the cover you see uh, in the middle. Now, the second cover actually is a totally different story. This is Colossus, Wolverine, and Nightcrawler going back to Russia uh, for Colossus. And they end up being captured by the Red Room. The Red Room is 
Russia's version of Weapon X. And they take Colossus, Nightcrawler, and Wolverine, and they capture them. But the key to that is they have to battle Omega Red, which is so cool. So this run, Divided We Stand, if you can get a trade paperback, get it. It's a very, very cool, trippy X-Men story. And also a very, very cool Wolverine, Nightcrawler, and Colossus story. I love this run. I actually, as soon as I got it, I gave it to my friend. He read it. And he was like, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But yeah, it's about Lady Mastermind sending the whole city of France, San Francisco back into the 1970s. And very cool concept. And this run would be Uncanny X-Men 495 through 499. Now, you know, I like to do uh, what am I reading now? And this is what I'm reading right now. This is Supergirl's run. It's Mike Turner covers. I think they came out with variant covers too. But uh, I have number one, two, number three. Get the glare off of there. Michael Turner, number three. Definitely number four. Number five. Number five variant. Number six. Before I go any further, number six has actually Supergirl and Power Girl on the front cover. Supergirl's name is Nightwing. A lot of people, for you guys that don't know where Dick Grayson got his name Nightwing from, it's actually a name that Superman used to carry. So that's a nice little thing that I just wanted to tell you about the name of Nightwing. I've always assumed Nightwing was some kind of paying um, respects to Batman, but no, it's actually a, a, a name that Superman actually used to used to carry, which is pretty weird, but pretty cool at the same time. Number seven and number eight. So this is my little what I'm reading right now. And I remember buying all these off the actual comic book shop wall. And so every once in a while, I always tell my friends who uh, collect with me, I'm like, you guys got to go back and read your old comics. Stop just keep buying new comics and not going over and reading your stories because, you know, you wouldn't be coming to me and asking me questions if you actually would just go back and reread your books. I'm not the greatest comic uh, historian, but at the same time, too, like I go over my old issues and reread them, you know? But then you have some people that just collect and read and just move on. And that's fine. Everybody, you know, collects their own different way. But I do believe that you should get your money's worth out of it. So that's my, that's what I'm reading right now. My Supergirl run, which I really, really love. And that's from back in like 2000, uh, I want to say four. Let's see. It actually is in 2005. So pretty cool. And so as we get closer to our main event, I wanted to just talk about this book, which is Gwenpool number one. I know this is not her first appearance, but this is the first time she went solo, I guess you can say. But I wanted to talk to my Marvel fans and the pricing of our books. Look at this price. $4.99. That means this book was $5. Now, as a Marvel fan, I'm a little offended that they would price their books out to that much. But I do understand as we get older, prices do uh, fluctuate. But yeah, paid $5 for this book. You know, I'm not upset about it. It's just wow how times have changed. And I think Marvel needs to bring it down a little bit because I know DC is at like $2.99. So uh, Disney, Mickey Mouse. Please bring that down a little bit. But yeah, this is one of the main events. I actually have three main events. This is uh, Gwenpool number one. Or what is it? Let's read the whole title together. The Unbeatable Gwenpool. The Unbeatable Gwenpool number one. For some reason, I'm just attracted to silly characters. Not slapstick characters, but uh, silly characters uh, that can actually kill you very quick. Um as in like Deadpool, you know, people like that. So yeah, 
saw it for five dollars. I figured, eh, it was more to help out my local comic book shop because this guy is struggling. I mean, struggling. So I said, hey, if I could put five dollars in his pocket, he's worth it. So I picked this up for five dollars, and I'm not complaining. And so before I got into my two main events, I wanted to go over this. This is uh, Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Now, this book is so popular that it actually started a spinoff series, which is Batman Animated Series and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I had a friend who was telling me about this, and uh, he was so excited about it that he bought you know, me a copy and sent it to me or bought it to me. And I was very appreciative, appreciative of it. I was humbled by it. And for right now, from what I can tell, I've seen this book go in stores for like up to $30. So that friend rocks. Thumbs up to him. Uh, I say his name a lot. His name is Wendell. And we're like brothers. We look out for each other. You know, as much as Wendell um, invests in me, I invest in him. And you should always have a comic buddy like that. But I was saying that to say, this number one led to this. Batman Adventures and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is very cool. Now, when I went to the comic book shop, I freaking was so mad that I missed number one. I mean, I was pissed. And I told my comic book shop owner, the one that I told you was struggling. <clears throat> excuse me. I said, dude, if you find number one, you better freaking give it to me. Go through people's subscription boxes who don't come and pick up their comics and find that for me. Because I know somebody subscribed to that actual, you know, run of Batman Adventures and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And he said, dude, I got you. But as you can see, I was only able to produce number two. But I'm not absolutely upset with number two because look who's on the front cover. You know, I never noticed how much of a fan I am of certain people or certain characters. Until other people pointed out to me, and that's what happened with Star Wars, and that's what's happening with Harley Quinn. I'm starting to notice through my videos that Harley Quinn is sprinkled throughout every one of my videos. And I never realized that I was such a fan of uh, Dr. Harley Quinzel. But yeah, this is Batman Adventures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, number two. Uh, definitely will be getting number one. I don't care if I have to fight Satan himself, but somebody's going to give me that book. So this is one of our main events. And lastly, we have the unbeatable squirrel girl, which uh, this cover pays uh, or is a cover swipe from a Superman famous cover. Uh, you know, which Superman cover I'm talking about, but uh, I'm definitely going to be going through and getting all the swipes of that super of that Superman cover because I know Batman actually swiped the cover. It was like, what if Batman became Superman or what if Superman became Batman? So I definitely want that cover. So when I walked in my comic book shop and I saw this, I said, definitely, I have to put some more money in this guy's pocket to get him rolling. And I picked this one up. I'm a huge sucker for cover swipes. And, you know, when I saw this one, this was definitely my main event. One of the reasons why I look in the bag on the way home of comics and I smile at a stoplight. Make sure you don't read your comics while you're driving. And yeah, this is our main event. The Beatable Squirrel Girl, number what, 13? Let's look. Ah, oh, number 17. So, yeah. So once again, I'd like to thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Direct Edition. The channel is Fred Hall Direct Edition. And until I see you guys on the next video, you guys be safe out there. Read your comics, reread them, and take care of yourself. And love life, because life is very short. And I will catch you guys later. Peace!